Welcome, everyone, to another Inside Line podcast with your host, Dr. Daniel Cameron. In tonight's episode, Dr. Cameron will be discussing a paper that addresses the question of whether Lyme disease can cause cognitive dysfunction or dementia. It focuses on the case of a 69-year-old woman who died 15 years after her initial infection with Lyme disease. So good evening, Dr. Cameron. Thank you for joining us. And thank you, Darlene, for leading the discussion. So can you give us a little bit of the background of this case? Okay. Well, Godilla and colleagues wrote about this case. And uh, if I cover it, because uh, it started pretty simple, you know, erythema, migraine, rash, headaches, joint pain, and fever. And 10 days later, the doxygen uh, seemed to have cleared up everything. And so, of course, that's always a concern. So even though doxygen for 10 days works, is will there be any long-term consequences? Will there be any uh, problems for that individual? Because that uh, 10 days, I, I'm not uh, comfortable stopping at 10 days, uh, but there are doctors who do uh, prescribe. Now, over time, she developed a sleep behavior disorder, cognitive problems. That is, she had processing speed problems, mental tracking, word finding, you know, things we commonly see in Lyme disease. There's also a photophobia. I often see people who are sensitive to light, sensitive to sound, heat and cold. Paresthesias, which is like the numbness and tingling in the hands. Fasciculations is something you see with your eyes uh, and the muscles. And myoclonic jerks, that is their muscles was uh, uh, jerking. And uh, in this case, she improved with intravenous antibiotics followed by oral antibiotics. And so I find retreatment uh, quite helpful and fortunately she improved. Later on though, her condition worsened. So what the authors describe is that they did an extensive workup. They knew there was a REM behavioral disorder, verbalizations, uh, movement issues, neurodegenerative changes uh, that you might see in dementia. She couldn't speak so well. They call it a compressive aphasia, visual agnosia, anomia, deficits in executive function calculation, and mild memory problems. So there are so many um, visual issues, uh, hearing issues, um, and executive function that it was quite a concern to the authors. And finally, she passed away 15 years after the onset of her illness. Now they performed uh, an autopsy, which revealed the presence of Borrelia burgdorferia, right? In the brain and spinal cord tissue? Yeah, they, uh, there's always a debate about when you see a spirochete in the brain on autopsy, because uh, there seems to be uh, um, difficulty being sure what uh, what's a spirochete and what's some other kinds of uh, artifact in the brain. But the authors here did a variety of tests uh, and they were able to show that it's really a Brigdorfri using the tests that they had. So they uh, did state that they had evidence of really infection, which is what causes Lyme disease. Uh, but uh, they weren't completely sure that what they found caused her progressive neurodegenerative disorder. And that's often the case, you know, it's hard to prove causality. All we can really prove is yes, there was Lyme by the tests that they had. And yes, she had a neurodegenerative disorder that uh, reminded them of uh, Lewy body dementia. Yeah, Dr. Wormser, who is the uh, author of this particular paper about uh, Lewy ba body dementia, he wrote that um, that he had concerns with the diagnosis, uh, but he did say that Lewy body dementia has fluctuations in cognitive function, alertness, and attention, and that's what this patient had. That's uh, that's what Lewy body dementia has, and that's what this patient has. Wormser also, who was the chief author of this paper, 
uh, said there were other hallmarks of Lewy body dementia. He mentions in his uh, paper that they're easily distracted, can appear to be zoning out. They have impaired job performance as an early sign, and they have problems with multitasking and sleep disorders are common. So there actually is no precise test that can tell you what is Lewy body dementia. There is um, a reliance on clinical diagnosis. Um, you can't really take a, an autopsy uh, and diagnose it, so it's often done after the fact. So what the doctors do is really not go through um, tests to prove Lewy body dementia. They can just say clinically you have it, and they can't find anything else wrong to explain that dementia. In this case, uh, clinically, this patient looked uh, like Lewy body dementia. It actually fit uh, the description that Dr. Wormser, who wrote this, uh, this article, discussed. And, uh, and I thought that uh, I would uh, get a chance to discuss uh, a concern we all have as Lyme patients and as Lyme doctors. Uh, can Lyme disease uh, cause dementia? Now, uh, the, so the authors were, were looking at this case and they actually came to the conclusion that there was no evidence that Lyme disease caused dementia in this woman, as you mentioned. Yeah, Wormser and his, and his colleagues uh, said, yes, there's no convincing evidence, but convincing evidence is always a catchword for uh, stay tuned. You know, it's always hard to prove a cause of a disease. They, you can prove that, yes, they died with the uh, autopsy findings showing uh, Borrelia. What they specifically question is that, how do you know that they have Lyme disease based on laboratory tests since they didn't meet the CDC criteria? They had a few bands, but not the CDC criteria. And also because the patient didn't get better in 10 days of treatment with doxycycline, or at least the treatment that they had, uh, they questioned that uh, how could it be um, Lyme if they didn't get better with antibiotics? Now, in practice, we do know that patients get better and some don't. And we also know from the NIH trials that uh, some people do well with the antibiotics uh, and some do not. So. I think that saying, well, they fail antibiotic therapy, or at least they relapse, is not a way to throw out a Lyme case. And last thing, there is a debate by Wormser about this nested PCR technique and immunofluorescent antibodies. So this is common that doctors who are in this field uh, will argue about uh, which uh, technique to use to prove really big and so I think that uh, when we look at what Worms are suggested, that uh, he said, quote, cognitive complaints such as concentration or memory disturbances are common in patients with Lyme disease and in patients with residual subjective symptoms after treatment for Lyme. And so certainly uh, he grants in the article that she appeared to have the cognitive issues that are seen in Lyme disease. Now, the next thing Dr. Wormser discussed is that there are dementia-like syndromes, but he says it's due to rare, late neurologic manifestations of Lyme disease. Now, he's using the word rare, and of course, uh, rare is not good enough if you're the one with dementia or you're the one with cognitive problems. He gave us a, an example called chronic progressing meningeal encephalitis, often referred to, as, referred to as chronic encephalomyelitis. And now he said this is more of the uh, scene in Europe. And you know they often uh, focus more on uh, the other issues in America, like uh, encephalopathy, you know, art, arthritis, um, POTS, uh, which is an autonomic issue, or PANS, which is neuropsych. So there's always a debate about what to call something. The authors do do um, acknowledge the anecdotal evidence, right, of other cases where there are dementia-like symptoms in patients with Lyme disease? 
Yeah, I thought uh, Wormser um, did state uh, that quote, anecdotal evidence, however, does suggest that Lyme disease may rarely cause dementia. And so I thought that was a clear, succinct uh, uh, conclusion that, uh, that we should do some more work and find out how often Lyme disease has anything to do with dementia. Can you talk a little bit about you know, other cognitive problems that can, can be seen with Lyme disease? Well, I thought this patient had uh, a good example of so many of the things we see. And because uh, Lyme disease, uh, often uh, they are having trouble with processing information. They get information. Sometimes they process so poorly that they, they have trouble with words. They have troubles with events. Uh, and certainly when they try to work, uh, there is a, a difficulty picking up tasks, doing multiple tasks, and uh, safely completing projects. Um, because uh, this, uh, this uh, patient reminds us of what we see in practice, we, uh, I, I um, can tell you that um, lots of people have um, um, sensory issues, you know, from the brain where they can't see uh, um, or have visual disturbances. They have uh, uh, hearing issues. Uh, sometimes they'll have what looks like a, a seizure-like activity, um, but they don't have something wrong with the EEG. Uh, numbness and tingling in the hands and feet uh, make it difficult to know if it's from the brain or the body. Uh, there's also a um, ear ringing and jaw pain where you don't know what's a ear, nose, and throat issue or what's a Lyme disease. So I just thought this one patient uh, reminds you of so much that can happen to the brain, even in people who um, never end up having dementia. Do you find that the cognitive issues are harder to treat or take longer to treat in, in patients? Yeah, I find that neurologic issues are what disturb patients the most and what give them the most difficult uh, time with uh, working, with communicating. Uh, all, all the what we call neuropsych issues means it's sort of a fine line between just neurologic or psychiatric. Uh, I mentioned neuropsych because of quite a few of them have anger, sadness, irritability. Uh, they'll have a uh, despair sometimes. Uh, and with all of those uh, psychiatric problems, the doctors will commonly say uh, that, oh, it's psychiatric. Uh, so you've, you have worked in the, the field of dementia as well, have you not? Yes, I started my uh, medical school education uh, committed to working with uh, geriatrics. And over the next 10 years, uh, I became an expert first in delirium, which is acute confusional state, and then dementia. And so I ran a dementia unit in uh, Valhalla for two years. And not only did I know uh, and get to know uh, dementia, um, there's so much uh, from the literature, but it's much more from the hands-on working with the dementia patients. And so I'm looking, based on that experience, uh, will there be dementia in, uh, in Lyme disease patients? There's certainly a lot of cognitive issues, a lot of functional issues, uh, processing problems. Um, so I'm always on the lookout for will Lyme disease turn into dementia? Now, by the time they uh, are developing dementia, which you know the average age of dementia that I took care of was 84 years, a lot of doctors uh, and a lot of uh, families aren't looking so very hard for Lyme disease. I can mention that uh, in an earlier blog that Chris Christopherson had been told that he had uh, dementia. And there was a Rolling Stone article where he, he and his wife shared that it turned out there was Lyme disease. So it's always uh, one of those things where I certainly don't s typically see dementia. In fact, it's, uh, it's uh, so rare, but uh, uh, I see an awful lot of people with cognitive issues where the doctors says, well, it looks like dementia. Um, but uh, Severe cognitive issues uh, often uh, will do better with antibiotics. Well, you've written quite a bit on, on uh, patients 
and on Lyme disease patients with cognitive issues, as well as some of the case reports uh, focused on dementia. We encourage everybody to go over to your website and they can read a little bit more about this at danielcameronmd.com. So thank you, Dr. Cameron, for, for joining us and we look forward to the next meeting. And thank you, Darlene.